And good morning, everybody. Hello, this is Jeremiah with another fantastic webinar here from Land Effects. Um, this is on tools at an early stage, and this is a topic which has a, a tremendous amount of fondness for me. Uh, it's very near and dear to my heart. As we all know, we kind of uh, really came out of the gate with just an incredible construction documentation engine uh, that is Land Effects. And over the years, picked up traction, uh, just a, a really amazing machine for, for plant labeling, irrigation design, all of that. And in talking to firm after firm, there was a lot of feedback, and, and even not so much feedback, in just understanding more of how firms worked and what they were asking. And, and in fact, the way I would word it is firms were, were needing the construction documentation phase to move so, so quickly because, and I guess I would word it as this, is that they say we're over-designing too often. You know, my, my got my designs over here and they crank out this design as fast as they possibly can. And then the client doesn't like it or it's over budget. And so they need that the design tools to be so, so rapid. And my little analytical brain just translated that and, and said, wait a minute, I think there's a better way to, to address this. And so a lot of what you're going to see today is some features that came about uh, from some really fantastic interactions uh, with firms like uh, Parsons International and Abu Dhabi. Uh, Disney Imagineering working on you know projects like Disney Shanghai and and countless small people too uh, you know well over 60 percent of our user base full practitioners uh, doing you know a lot of residential design and and there are continue continuums of cross that range and the way that we've kind of translated it and worked it out is you know you need a, a professional and accurate communication with that client as soon as possible and you need to be talking the client's language which is money uh, because you know you want to spend your time making a great design and you don't want to have to go back and redo a design because you just weren't on the same page as the client anyway and that was kind of the way it translates into my brain and I, I hope some of that kind of rings uh, true but um, Amanda's going to walk you through a really incredible uh, way to do this we, we've spent a lot of effort on, on prepping for this webinar um, so uh, there's just going to be a lot to glean from this uh, no matter what size firm you are no matter what you do you're really going to get a great appreciation for these tools uh, for uh, an early stage of design. Uh, reminding everyone there is that Q&A box down there at the bottom. Feel free to chime in with any questions. Both myself and Jake are here to get you answers and get that routed over to Amanda. Um, so without any further ado, I will hand this off to Amanda. Great, thanks. Good morning, everybody. Um, so just as a brief overview, kind of going of what Jeremiah was just describing. Um, we have a great webinar planned for you with, um, we're just gonna go over a few steps uh, and look at some of the tools that you would use for starting with a early working concept. And basically I'm gonna go over with you uh, the workflow for how you're going to set up and complete a basic concept plan. Uh, the scenario I'm going to go over for this webinar will be a design build residential project where the client wants a quote to design and build their backyard and has a list of features that they really want. However, you can extend this same process to apply to other scenarios like say a municipal design RFP for a park uh, where the city is requesting a cost estimate and a presentation with a refined concept or a meeting with a brand new client to bring forth an initial concept and budget to start discussions for maybe a retail plaza or a high-end residential apartment building. So this can really apply to a lot more than just the residential design build. Uh, but we felt I felt that was, this was the easiest method to kind of present this, so that's what we're going to go with during this webinar. So just keep in mind as I go along that I have, I've set up a, 
a lot of uh, things in my template along the way in this process already. So I'm going to be referring to those as um, a lot during the presentation. And the goal of this webinar is to demonstrate that with your templates properly set up, you too can get a phone call from a client at 9 a.m. in the morning and get them an accurate quote and a basic concept drawing with a photo board, uh, hopefully before noon, if not by early afternoon. Uh, obviously, time is money, so you want to spend less time with your quotes while still giving it the effort it needs to impress and win the client over so that you get the job. So I'm going to be going at a slightly slower pace, although uh, if there's anything that I might go fast on, I use a lot of hotkeys while I draft. I'll try and mention uh, any hotkeys drafting that I use while I do that. Uh, and uh, in the end, we will be able to go over some of the processes that are happening in the background as well, like the template creation and the callout tools, uh, the cost estimating tools, and anything else. Uh, you can always use the chat window or the question window below to uh, let uh, Jeremiah know what processes you would really like me to cover again at the end, if there are some that uh, you really would like me to cover a second time. Um, so of course you can always take notes, um, and I highly encourage it, of any of the specific tools that I mention. And uh, you can make use of our web page, and I'll just show you that. Sorry about that. Pull that back over here. <laughs> there we go. Just here on our web page, if you go under support and documentation, uh, you can go through everything, basically all of our tools. We're always expanding this. Uh, but for instance, I'll be briefly mention using a saved layer state during this presentation. So afterwards, you can all, if you keep a note and said, oh, she said uh, we were using the layer state tool, you can always go in here, just type in layer state or some sort of keywords. And you can go in here, layer state tools and just learn all of the steps on how to go about uh, creating, saving, and then accessing those. So that's a really great resource uh, that, that I definitely recommend you uh, checking out at the end of this webinar. Um, I'll also be referring a lot to uh, some other webinars as well, and I'll make sure that I give you some uh, the titles of those so that you can go find them as well. OK, so uh, let's start off the process in this case, it's going to begin with a, a phone call, an email, or an in-person discussion with your new potential client. Uh, in this instance, the Prentice family has come into the office looking for a design build quote. And through discussion, he and his partner talk to you about their, their place, their nice little villa here in the sun. And uh, they tell you about what they really want with a budget range maybe and uh, of what they can afford. You want to, you're going to narrow down your options and are left with a good idea based on your experience because you're a very qualified landscape architect and, or designer and uh, with some rough sketches through that meeting and a promise to provide them with a quote and a concept idea uh, drawing, you, uh, it's time for you to start off. So basically, here's my uh, list of all of their wants and needs for their backyard here. They really want an outdoor kitchen with uh, a few perks, but not too over the top. They want themselves a hot tub with some pavers in the backyard. They want to fill in this area right here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start off that drawing. So as soon as they leave the office, you can basically start getting uh, going on all of this. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead, and I've already opened up Google Earth Pro to start with. So just so if in case you haven't heard, Google Earth Pro is now offered for free, so I absolutely recommend using it, uh, especially because it can provide some uh, decent quality aerials for you to use on your projects. So basically, I'm going to go here. I already have my area up. I'm going to basically kind of 
zoom in to get the properties so that I get enough detail and enough context to maybe even use this aerial a little more in the future. We're going to grab this area right here and I'm going to go to uh, save image in here. So that's just at the top and that brings you into a, a new mode. You can put a title here but I won't need to. But the best part about going into the save image mode is that I have a scale bar down here as well as a north arrow just for reference. Um, now for me I work in metric so obviously this isn't set up correctly so I'm just going going to uh, find that and uh, change those units. So what you can do is go over to your options. It's uh, options in Windows and if you're on a Mac it's going to be preferences. And down here in units of measurement you can either go with the system default or you can check exactly what you want. So I'm going to do that. Say OK and it has changed itself in here for me. I'll just make sure that this is fully up. I'll go back out and center it so north is directly up. Go back into here and I'm going to save this image. So I can choose a different resolution if I want but this works for me. And I'm going to go ahead and save that image. There we go. I've already got my project set up for this. And I'm going to save that image into my base folder. I'll overwrite this just to get that name. Save it with a specific name. That's always the best in a base folder. Great. So now that's saved. Uh, so I can go out of here and I'm going to move into AutoCAD. So uh, what I want to do is I want to open up my meters template that I've set up. I'm working in metric. Of course, all of these steps also work with imperial. Just uh, translate in your head for that. Uh, now, you're going to want to open this up with this. Uh, I've set up this template as a blank, clean template. If you don't have one yet, uh, you're going to want to watch one of our sheet setup webinars in either metric or imperial. You can also watch both because at the end of those webinars, the second half kind of go over different steps to setting up a sheet template. Uh, so those are both uh, helpful for that. Uh, this drawing, as I open it, it's completely clean and clear of any proxies or other junk data and it'll set up properly for scale. So I've already made sure about all of that. Uh, so I can completely move ahead without any worries. So the first thing I'm going to do is save the drawing. I'm going to go over to File. We're going to save it into that same project folder. And I'm going to call it uh, a base file with my project number at the front. That's just my way of organizing. You may have a slightly different way of organizing things, uh, but this is just an example you can kind of take from if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Great, so now that's saved. And I saved it first because I'm going to be x refing things into this. And in order to x reference relatively, which is what I want to do, um, you do need to have the drawing saved. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is set the project here. Go to my FX admin and under projects I'm going to make a new project. And we're going to give it the same drawing number, 89. Great. I'm going to call that Prentice Residence. Great. We will just grab my template, my preference set, sorry, 
and I'm not going to actually set it based on a template because I'm going to bring in my template items later through import. That way I'll keep this drawing pretty clean. Great, that's all good for me. Okay, so uh, now with the project set, I'm actually going to start working with this drawing and bringing things in. And we're going to be moving along pretty quickly. So I'm going to go to XREF, I'm going to type in XREF, and that brings up my XREF palette. And I'm going to go under here and attach an image. And I'll go back and find that image where I saved it. Desktop, there we go. And that was under base that I saved it. Gonna open that up. Um, so for scale, you can't really scale an image, but I am gonna keep it on relative path. If uh, it's set to absolute path and it won't go to relative path, that happens frequently. All you need to do, cancel out of this, save the drawing where it's at, close CAD, reopen it again, reopen the drawing and try this again and you'll be able to choose relative. So I'll go with that and it wants me to insert it, so I'm going to do that. Great. So there's my drawing in here. So the next thing I'm going to do is scale this drawing, because right now it's not to scale. I've just kind of put it in arbitrary. So, but like I said, we have our scale bar down here. So what I'm going to do is draw a line, and I'm going to use the align command. So I'll just draw a line roughly to that scale bar. So obviously this is a concept. It's going to be pretty rough. It's not, uh, quantities aren't going to be perfect because the scenario here is uh, it's so early in the project, there's no hope of getting any sort of um, CAD base to work off of. You may have got, you may just be going off the aerial photo. At best case scenario, you might have a, a hard, uh, eight and a half by 11 of a legal survey or a PDF of it. That's your best case scenario. But we're going off of this. It's going to be pretty much the same either way. So I'm going to go to draw a line that's actually 100 meters. So that's a little shorter, but that's perfect. So I'm going to grab all of that and use the align command. First point. Second first point is here. Second point is going to be here, and I want it to go down to here. And I don't need a third point, so I'm going to right click to accept that. And I'm going to say yes to scale. And there, that's scaled down so that this line is exactly 100 meters. I'll get rid of those lines. Great, so this drawing, this uh, aerial photo is as scaled as I can possibly get it now. Uh, usually when I'm working with aerial photos, I'll also set a little bit of a fade to it. Just up here, I clicked on here using the ribbon, um, sl slid over the fade just until it's a little bit dim. That way any line work that I do on top of this is going to stick out for me. Um, you can also find fade if you don't, uh, if you're not working with the ribbon. I highly recommend moving yourself to the ribbon, but if you're not, you can always open up your properties, right click, find your properties. It'll open up your properties palette over here and you can find fade in here. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, with everything set up here, I'm going to set a UCS. And that's really easy with our land effects tools. It's really quick. Basically, I want to have uh, this drawing lined up so that this edge of the house is parallel with the bottom of the page. And that way it'll be a little bit easier for me to draft everything. I can do it all with ortho. Right now it might be a little, it's a bit more difficult to uh, draw these right angles on an angle. And I want it to be oriented that way, facing the street in the end anyways. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to draw a line just along this front of edge of the house, roughly parallel with it. Great, and I'm going to use the 
UCS tools. So that's just up here under the FX Admin ribbon. I'm going to click New UCS. Origin point, I'm going to click here. Specify X axis, I'm going to select that line that I drew. So that's going to represent my X axis. And then I'm going to draw and pull this so that the direction is going towards where I want the top of the page to be. And I'm going to click. Give a UCS name. Okay, there. It's all set up. Pretty much ready to go. Uh, the last thing I'm going to want to do, I'm not going to set a scale yet because I haven't quite figured out what scale I want. Um, so the next, that's going to be the next step is to figure out what scale I want. I'm going to save this though with the changes that we've done so far. So if you've followed along with the uh, sheet setup webinars, you'll know that we highly recommend working in one file for your base and then moving over to another file for any sheets that you use. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go in here, open up another meters template. I'm going to keep that XREF open because I am going to first save this drawing and then import that X reference. So again, oh, cancel. Save the drawing. I'm going to save it in the same place, or you might have a folder structure that you like to use to keep them a bit separate. But I'm going to call this one Concept Plan. Just to keep it separate from, say, uh, naming, redoing this, uh, not redoing, but moving forward with this. Um, project in the future with different sheets for a more detailed plan. If I get the job, I'm going to call that something like layout plan or planting plan. But right now I'm in concept mode, so I'm going to name it uh, exactly what I'm in. So with that drawing saved, I'm going to XREF in my other drawing. So going into my working drawings, I'm going to grab my base and I'm going to XREF this in. I'm going to keep it as a relative path. I want my scale to be exactly as it is in the other drawing and my insertion point to also be the same. Um, I, in terms of attachment and overlay, you may have heard uh, which one to use. In this case, I'm going to choose attachment because I want the nested X references in this X reference to follow with it. And that includes the aerial photo. The aerial photo is a nested X reference. I want it to come into this drawing as well. And I don't foresee any scenario where this drawing is going to circular reference with my base file. So it, choosing attachment is okay for this one. Great, so that's come in. I'm going to zoom in. Now it doesn't bring the UCS with it, so I'm going to really quickly do that UCS again. Great, so that's all set up. I'm going to resave that one again. So those two are linked to each other. Now I'm going to create a layout to figure out what scale I'm going to set all of this at. I'm going to close that XREF palette. I'm going to right click down here, again following our sheet setup web webinar, and I'm going to choose from template. And I have my layouts template. I'll grab that one, pull in my 24 by 36 page, and that's created that down here. I'm just going to get rid of these other two layouts because I don't need them anymore. Great, so this is set up. And now I'm just going to insert my title block. So I've already saved that one as well. Again, if you want to know how to do this one, the Imperial Sheet Setup webinar goes over saving title blocks into the block section of LandFX. So I'm going to go into FX Site. Under Blocks, I'm going to go to my Discipline Graphics where I've saved it title blocks and I've called it over here a concept title block. Created a brand new title block 
just for uh, a nice pop and larger text for a concept plan. Grab that and place it in. Great, all of that's in. So I can start filling this out really briefly. We'll just call that apprentice residence. Great, you can give it a description, concept. We'll do this really quick. An address. All of that's in. Um, the rest of this information you can kind of put in. Uh, obviously, this is all up to you. You're going to be setting this up beforehand. But I'll save that. Give the sheet a title. And you can put a scale in there afterwards. But I, for uh, the purposes of this webinar, we'll say you're going to fill out all of this first. And then I'll just rename this one to my sheet name. Great, so with that in, I'm going to uh, create a viewport. I like using the viewport or viewports um, command and just choosing that. It's a pretty fast method. And I'll put that in. And we'll figure out a scale. I want to leave some room for my photos and my schedules at the end. Go in here, kind of nail in on that backyard with all of uh, the context around it. And then I'm going to go up here and use my scale. And I figured out before that a 1 to 50 scale works pretty well. So I'm going to say OK. And that's going to scale that for me. I might expand this just a little to see more of the house. Great. And I'll go ahead and just really quickly make a viewport layer. Or I can load my layer states into here. So that was, sorry, I'll do that again. Up here at the FX Admin ribbon, load layer states. We have a few already saved in. So I'm going to go through sheet border. I believe this one has a, a viewport layer saved into it. There we go. And if I look at my layer properties, I went to the home tab, layer properties. This I'm working in FX 20, 2015. Your ribbons up here might be set up a di bit differently depending on which version of AutoCAD you're using. So I'm in, sorry, FX CAD 2015. If I go down to set viewport, I usually prefer this to be set to non-plot. At least for me, that's a preference. Okay, so that's set up and ready to go. And I've determined that my scale is gonna be one to 50. Great, so with all of that set up, we can go back to our base drawing. I'm going to save this, but I can keep it open while I'm working into here. So the first thing I want to do before I start drawing anything in my base file, and again, we're only about, oh, about 20 minutes into drafting uh, this, and most of it's just been uh, set up, but it's only taken 20 minutes to basically set up my entire drawing. So that's pretty good pace so far. Um, I'm going to load in my layer states because you can tell here I still have my layer properties manager palette up and you can see I only have layer zero and if you know anything about CAD the number one rule is never draw on layer zero so <laughs> or if you do manage to draw on it move it move things off of it right away uh, so I'm going to start loading my layer state into here so I loaded one in the other one I'm going to go in here and load another one 
Again, F FX admin, load, load layer states. And I've saved my own here in templates. I've called it Amanda. You can call it your company name, concept plan, or uh, layout drafting, or whatever, to have all of your default layers in here. And we'll go over at the end how you can go about doing that. So I'm going to go here and open that up. And that's going to load in all of my layers that I want to draft on already set to the colors that match up with my plot style and any line types that I want and any uh, they should all be turned on but you can save a layer state with some layers frozen if you want so the first thing I'm gonna do you can see I have a aerial layer here I'm gonna grab my aerial photo and put it on that just right off the bat that way I can easily freeze that aerial to get it out of the way if I need to while I'm drafting. It's not usually very convenient to draft while with the, uh, while with the aerial on after you've done uh, some of your initial drafting. So, um, yeah, that's about it. We're all ready to go and start drawing. So, now what you're going to want to do is uh, with your aerial uh, before you start drafting some of the things that uh, you need for um, showing the plan for these people to make it look professional but fast uh, you're going to want to draw maybe some of the proposed design like some of these pathways so that you can snap onto them and make it very clear they might want a different uh, paver pattern on that pathway but keep the same whatever you need so basically I'm gonna pull a cooking show move here and take this drafting exercise out of the oven after 30 to 45 minutes at 375 Here's my oven. I'm going to pull all of that in. Uh, just make sure I get all of it. Great. You can try this at home. Go back to my base. Doing a control V. And I'll just paste it in. This is the, the unfortunate truth of working from an aerial photo, although it's very convenient. Sometimes the scaling factor can be a little bit off at times. So you can see from me doing it one to the other, uh, it's uh, shrunk a little. It was all right. It, I made it a little bit bigger on this one. So I'm just going to really quickly adjust that. We'll use a line again. There we go. Yes to scale. That's pretty close. So obviously you would trace around, what I've done here is I've traced around all of the existing items approximately. Uh, I'm a stickler for details. <laughs> I'm going to choose some points a little further away. Oops, not scale, align. Align. There, two, and then I will do that one up to here. That should get it more... to the actual scale. That's much better. Okay. Okay, so uh, basically we're focusing here on this area then, and I've roughly drafted out everything that's in here. And we're going to start with uh, drafting our patio. So I'm going to go over and grab, I've made, uh, in my layer states, I've already saved 
some great uh, layers to work from. So I can just set them to be active and start drawing. I'm turning ortho on and off using F8. Uh, we'll go about here. I could use polar here for perfect 45 if I wanted to. I'm going to guesstimate it. And I'm just going to pull it all the way over here to line it up. And trim using the TR. Polyline PL, just in case you wanted to follow along. <laughs> find that end point. There it is. And you can notice that my arcs aren't hitting where the actual arc is, but I'm going to fix that in a sec. I'm going to just grab that, pull it in. These are a few drafting tips as we go along on how to do this very fast for a conceptual plan. So I pulled that together and the intent here is that I'm going to set a rough note with an area already attached to it and a hatch into here. And I want to use the select a, a line so I need to pull all of these together. They've both been drawn as polylines so I can just grab both of them and use the join command typing J for join and pulling it together. If it doesn't perfectly join, you might need to adjust some of these points over here. And I can see in my properties manager, because I always keep my palette open for properties to really quickly look at the properties of anything I have selected, you can see here that it is indeed closed. So it will, it will work with ref notes. So that's set up. And so this is going to be my main patio area that I'm going to put my kitchen in. And I'm going to have a little offshoot out here to the hot tub. So I'm going to draw my hot tub area using the rectangle. And I'm just going to uh, draw it with certain dimensions, maybe 3 by 3 or 3.5. Nice square like that. And I'm just going to use the align command. I love the align command. I use it basically all the time. This one, this time, I'm not going to scale, though. And I'm going to grab midpoint snap. And snap it to that midpoint to move it out. Actually, that, that's a nice design. Uh, maybe a little bit out. And I'm toggling between my snaps using F3, if you haven't caught on to that. There we go. So I should have, I kind of want all of this area to be together. So just really quickly drafting that out. There we go. And I'll use the join command to join all of those back together for another close polyline. Great, so that's going to be all of my area. And I'm just going to draw in my kitchen now. So I've already kind of predetermined again through sketching what it's going to be. So I'm going to quickly draft it in here. Oh, this was going to be about two meters and another three meters that way. And then about a two foot or 0.6 counter depth. start again over here, 0.6. And I always keep, um, this is 
to get this kind of thing happening while you're drafting, you need to go down to, oh, what was that? Uh, it was snap reference, snapping reference lines right here. If you can't find these, uh, if you're working in, in F, uh, 2015 CAD, you can just go down here to customization to turn it on, object snap tracking, or turn on the, the toggle so you can see the toggle, then you'll have to toggle it on. But that's really cool because with when you're in ortho mode, uh, you can just kind of hold on to here until you get that snap endpoint and then pull it across. And that way you can make sure things are lining up perfectly. <laughs> I shouldn't have closed that. I lost track of what I was doing. Okay, I need to join these to close it. There we go. There's my kitchen, and I'm just going to also put in here, uh, in my kitchen, they said they wanted a little bar area, so I'm going to pull that in as well. I'm just going to kind of draft along here. I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to offset this. My bar is going to be about a foot wide, my bar counter, uh, so I'm going to put that in. Offset that, explode that. I'm going to round off the corners here, convert to arc. Just hovering over that, convert to arc, down, and I'm typing in a foot because I already have a feeling of what the radius should be. And again, I'm using that snap reference to line that up, pull it in. These are just some really good drafting. So arc, go here, snap that there. Arc, using the A. Ugh. And I'm pulling it in. Again, it's a concept plan. You don't have to be perfect. But it is good to be fairly precise any time that you're drafting as much as possible. And I actually might want to move that in a bit. I don't want my bar area to be quite that large. So we're going to pull that in about another meter. There we go. So I'll convert all of these into polylines because I exploded this. This one's now a line, and so I need to use the p-edit. Go in here. Oh, choose multiple. M for multiple. Yes, convert them, and yes, join them. Great, so that's all a polyline. And you'll see why I've created that into a polyline later. Um, OK, so that's all ready to go. Um, everything's kind of basically set in terms of what I wanted to draft for my outdoor living space. Uh, so now I can go ahead and start importing my ref notes that I've already set up in a template. So as you go, I'm going to go to FX site, go into ref notes for this brand new project. And what I'm going to do is I've already set up a template. So I'm going to go to import. And uh, I haven't actually saved it as a template yet. But if you did save it as a template, it would be down here. Uh, but otherwise, I've saved it in here. And I'm just going to grab them all because, say, I plan on using them all. Or I'll, I'll grab the ones that I want. So I'll do, uh, I won't need that. I will need the pergola. I will need the sink, fridge, barbecue, grill, and a bar stool. All of that, hot tub. And I'm going to use a, oh, 
this type of paver, stone paver. Um, I was using shift down to here, and then I switched over to control, holding down control while clicking to select something else out here. Um, and that's about all that I'm probably going to use on this plan. So I can add all of those into the project. And you will see the magic of templates once we go into them. So now that I've added all of those rough notes already in, and I go in and edit this pergola here, you can see I've already set a symbol that is the right size for this pergola. Um, and I've also set a photo here. So I'm going to use all of this. I've set a cost. I've set where how it's uh, saved. Everything is set up to just really quickly start using it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in and place my pergola. This is on a manual rotation if you're saving a block. So we'll pull that in. I'm just in snap mode. Um, that's why it was, if it's ever jumping like that, here I'll go back into snap mode so you can see it. It's actually snapping, um, but the cursor is not showing just so that you can recognize what that might look like. So F3 and it rotates normally. Put that in. And I'll just kind of line that one up a bit better. And I'll go in and put in more rough notes. So I'm going to put in um, my counter. I'll place that. And basically, I've set up my bar counter as a square area. Oh, so that, sorry, not bar counter, uh, standard counter as a square area with a hatch and a price and everything already set in there. I can also set a photo in there if I need to. So I'm going to place that standard counter to this closed polyline. Aha! I forgot a step. Slap on the wrist. I'll purge that out. You can probably guess which step I forgot as I was going through my carefully planned notes and that was scale so to quickly as soon as I figured out I, I, that I forgot to set a scale um, after I had figured out um, how to set what scale I wanted remember I wanted to set to 1 to 50 so I quickly deleted that I purged it out now I'm going to go to my FX admin and set my scale 1 to 50 meters, everything's okay. Do that. Go back, and let's try this again. Place. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now my bar counter, I've set that in. And I've said what layer I want to set it to. L kitch bar count. I say okay. I've lost, uh, when I did that purge, I accidentally lost all of this. I'm going to pull that back in. The beauty of layer states. I can pull them all back in at a moment's notice. So I'm going to make a new layer because I hadn't saved it into that layer state, but L. Oh, nope, I have it in here. The ref node actually pulled that layer in. There we go. So I'll put that to L kitch bar count. There we go. And I'll throw this one onto my L kitch layer as well. So it's on the right layer or I'll catch count. There we go. So it's on the right layer, and I know it's going to pl plot how I want it to be. And so those were saved into my layer state, uh, that L kitch count. Okay, and uh, we'll continue on then. So more ref notes. We'll throw it in my hot tub. Great. 
and we'll grab all of my outdoor kitchen stuff. So a sink. We're gonna place. I'm just gonna place that here. I'm gonna turn on ortho so that it snaps with it. Barbecue. Pull that over here. A nice grill to the side of the barbecue. So you can see how easy this, as if you set it all up beforehand, it becomes extremely easy to just pull everything off at a moment's notice. And so in terms of all of these reference notes, you would set them up with all of the regular things that you would normally use um, when you're doing your drawings. So go through maybe your last five projects, pick out all of the items that you would have normally specified uh, and you hopefully you'll have some prices attached with them and you can set them all into your template. There we go. And this is going to actually turn up uh, darker. I'm going to grab this and this and throw it to the back. There we go. So it goes underneath everything. Uh, so what I actually want this uh, to kind of pull out as is um, I want this to show up gray. So that's on this layer with AutoCAD. I'm going to find that layer, LPAT13. There we go. And I'm just going to change that to be a gray. Great, and I'm gonna click on it. It'll open up my hatch ribbon, and I'm gonna select and choose some island, this counter, so that it doesn't count on that. And will it choose that? Hopefully that works. I should have done a outline around that. But we'll leave it for now. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna do is just add some bar stools. It went behind the image. This is sometimes why I like to turn the image off while I'm in the middle of drafting. But I can easily do a regen, RE for regen, and pull it out. I'll rotate that one again. Going to freeze that. Over here, freeze. I can easily turn it back on afterwards. Okay, and I'll copy that around to give our patrons four bar stools. Okay, so we have our outdoor kitchen area all set up and ready to go. So we're just going to save that and go back to our concept plan and reload. Hopefully this pops up. If not, type in XREF to get back to your F X references. And you can see that in here. Oh, I don't have that base. I'll turn that up back on. Or I can actually just turn it on here so that I know my aerial will always be on even if I freeze it in the other drawing over here. And we're ready to just create our plan or our, uh, our drawing to give to our client. Nice and professional looking, we're going to first run a schedule. So I'm going to make sure that this drawing is also set up to the same project. There we go. Open that up. Yes, everything's perfect. I'm going to go to my rough notes and run a schedule. Drawing. I'll use symbols for the areas and volumes. You can change all of these as you want them to be. I'm not going to include that, and I am going to include cost. And I can go in here and change that title. And you can see here, I have a really quick cost estimate for my client. If you want, you cannot show that cost and just keep it to yourself uh, to show your client. 
But other than that, I can start putting in some photos as well. So what I'm going to do, I've already, I already have that all set up in my rough notes uh, template as well. So I'm going to double click in here. Oh, first I'm going to make sure that this is locked. Yes, so it won't pan around. Uh, go to my rough notes, or sorry, um, over to site callouts and grab photo callout and just grab those items. There we go. Yep, that's it. And yes, I do want to drop shadow and we'll put that right in here. Excellent. And I'll grab that. That's actually outside. It put it into the um, into the paper space so I can go and refine where that arrow is. And you can go along in here and start putting all of those photo callouts. Gotta. It grabbed my pavers. So I'll show them what those pavers are going to look like. I'll put that over here. And you can see that this uh, plan is really quickly coming together to something that the client can relate to. Hmm, that sync one didn't quite come through, or it may have pulled the wrong one. There we go. As you can tell, I haven't set up all of the photos. Obviously, you would. One last one, we'll actually try and pull this hot tub. There we go. So that's pretty cool. All of a sudden I've got something that I can show my client, show off everything. So all of these photos come with the um, with the title that I've set it to. And then what I can just do is um, save this and I can even add a few plants to this as well and colorize them. I'll do that really, really fast. Um, in the meantime, while I'm doing that, maybe if there's some questions, we can kind of line those up and um, get over to that part. Uh, Jer, were there any questions that popped up that maybe people wanted something to go uh, over or just a clarification? Um, none right now, so just uh, the uh, Jake and I already took care of a few, so um, that is a good time for you guys to uh, punch in your questions and uh, we'll have a little question period in just a second. Great. Okay, so what I've done here is I've um, gone into my concept plants. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Uh, I'm going to import my groups from that same template that I've set up, or it might be a different template that you set up. I've got my flowering trees. I've got my a few uh, groups here. Grab that other one. Great, so those are all ready to place in. I'll place in a few daylilies around here. should actually be using our new tool. There we go. This is Plant Shotgun, if you haven't already had a chance to try it out. a lot of fun to use if you haven't already used it. I'll move that one around. <laughs> that came out way too big. That should be about four for a flowering tree. There we go.
Really cool. Save that. Go back to my concept plan. Reload that in. And I'll just actually colorize that in my base as well. Go to presentation, color render. Set some color trees to that. With a nice that daylilies. We have some ones down here with flowers. So I'll choose that. Grab a hosta. You can also have this already set up in your uh, template. There we go. Save, go over, reload. Everything's in there. Great, so this plan is ready. Make sure my transparencies are on to show my client. And so um, I hope all of you grabbed something useful out of this webinar just in terms of uh, kind of the processes that you can use uh, to show your client and work with them to get them something very quick and professional looking. Uh, to send off to them with those concept plants. You can do that a little bit more refined if you want to. Fo photo call out those as well. And then uh, also sh throw in a uh, concept plant schedule with prices. Um, and then you're basically off and running with being able to give your client a prepared and complete concept with everything in it in um, basically with that oven move this probably would have taken me a little over an hour to pull everything together and I'm sure that you're going to do it with a little bit more refinement than I was uh, just in this hour webinar. Um, I know that there's a lot of tools that we went over that I didn't quite cover in detail but again I highly recommend that you go uh, into if you need, want to learn how to use templates just go into that documentation page type in templates you'll find a lot of great guides about that as well as some other webinars on exactly how to create your own template with all of this information attached so that you can start pulling it directly into your project as well. Um, Everything that I covered is already covered in the documentation online. So since there isn't anything that people wanted to go over specifically, I think it's probably best if we leave that here since we're at 1102 and uh, uh, that's probably good enough for this topic for now. And uh, again, have a great day and I hope everybody definitely took away something useful. All right. Well, thanks so much, everybody, and uh, um, have a good weekend. And uh, if we didn't get a chance to get to your questions, uh, shoot us a quick email uh, if you have any follow-ups, and uh, we'll be happy to uh, go further with you. Thanks so much.